All right, folks, uh, good afternoon, happy new year, happy 2020. I hope you all are doing fantastic. I have to say 2020 is, it has been going off to a very quick start. So for those that, of you that don't know who I am, my name is Mara Latori and I run the Funky Spork platform. And once again, the purpose of the Funky Spork is to develop original recipes while promoting local food systems. So today I wanna introduce you to two really incredible people. I've got Anna Jones and Andre Hill Jr. who are both part of the Urban Progress Alliance which is an organization here in Tampa. So we're gonna spend a few minutes just getting to know these two folks and some really cool things that they've got off the ground. So let's get started. So both Anna and Andre, tell me about yourself and the Urban Progress Alliance and what, what is your role in? Gotcha, gotcha. So I'm Andre Hill Jr. This is Anna Jones. Uh, I am the project manager for Urban Progress Alliance. She's the secretary. Um, I, I, I tell you what, I kind of want to go ahead and uh, I, I'm going to do a little bit on Urban Progress Alliance sure, and then please. we're going to get on into yeah. the Tampa Heritage Initiative. Uh, Urban Progress Alliance, of course, is a nonprofit organization. Uh, we plan on taking that international, so it have many different interests in many different communities. Um, the Tampa Heritage Initiative is much more grassroots in a sense. Okay. All right. So we get right into the community, uh, engage people on a one-on-one, -on -one and see exactly what it is that they need. Okay. Right. So um, our common theme or our common agenda for the uh, Tampa Heritage Initiative is to be self-sustainable. Okay. So self-sustainability is uh, something we advocate strong for. We notice that when we're going into a lot of communities, uh, a lot of their plights, a lot of their problems mm -hmm. stem in a lack of that, mm -hmm. a lack of self-sustainability, right? right. Um, and, and, you know, and it stems from a lot of different places, you know, lack of education, lack of resources and, and, and such. But um, we just want to provide the people with information and uh, give them the confidence that they can do things for themselves and not have to worry about outside sources in order to relieve their issues in the community sure. so not to not to make it all grim and stuff, no, but, <laughs> but um, so this is how we got into the urban agricultural industry sure we and when we're talking about self sustainability food is like like one of the pillars yes right sorry elements <laughs> to exist yes it's, it's, like, it's like food clothing and, and, and shelter yeah. is is um, uh, all like three pillars so Another thing is we like to eat. Yes, all, all the time. We like yeah, to eat. I don't know that. All right, so we're, we're some foodies. I know we're small, yeah. but we're some foodies. All right, so um, don't be, these are the the passions we have and which drove us into uh, getting into the urban agricultural field. Um, there's a beautiful story behind um, how we got to uh, start our community garden. Okay. All right. So. I'm gonna let Anna expand on that. She she tells it pretty well. Sometimes I'll yes. leave stuff out, but she 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 holds off every detail. <laughs> so, um, like you said, I'm Anna Jones. I'm the secretary for Urban Progress Alliance and um, a project coordinator for Tampa Heritage Initiative. So, um, we had a situation where um, an elder elderly woman um, approached our organization, and she was facing some issues. So, Urban Progress Alliance likes to provide economic development for the okay. communities. So um, our president is a third generation entrepreneur. You will hear him say it over and over and over again. And um, he's worked in various aspects and construction was one of his aspects that okay. he worked in. So um, she had a home that was on our lot, the, the lot that we we're building our community garden on. And it was unlivable, right? And the neighbors around her were kind of, you know, not okay with her situation being that way. So she was getting fined. She was getting, you know, kind of harassed by the city to do something about this sure. property. Like if you're going to yeah. live in it, go right. ahead. If not, do something. Right. And so um, we basically um, had to do some title work. So I'm a paralegal and a notary. So I was oh, able okay. to um, assist her with that. Had to do some title work, get her name back onto the deed for the property. And then once we've done that, we contracted with um, Fresh Start Development to demolish the house. Gotcha. 
So once the house was demolished, you know, she was very, very, very happy. Um, and so we had been looking for a lot to do a community garden. So we um, had been looking for probably about a year right. and some change. And we had a couple of things that we, you know, had a couple of lots, but those fell through. Right. So it was like, we were just keep right. pounding, keep pounding, trying to find this lot. And so once this lot was empty, we're like, okay, Maybe we should just ask Miss Lyman how can we put this community garden right here? And so, yeah, so we contacted her, said, hey, we've been looking for this lot. Now that this one is empty, yeah. do you plan on doing anything with it, like, immediately? And she's like, no, I'm like, can we put our community garden there? Like, it's right there in the heart right. of West Tampa, right. right where we want to kind of be at. And she was ecstatic. She was like, yeah, sure. You can do whatever you want with that lot. <laughs> you know? Wow. And so, um, and, and their lives, you know, the Unity Garden will be on Beach Street in okay. West Tampa. Wow. That's, that's a really, that, there's a lot of serendipity, a lot of like kind of overarching factors that kind of, it wasn't just, yes, you were looking for a garden um, for a, all the right reasons, but then there's this woman that had these needs. So, Sorry. What a way, and it's not that it was planned, it was just kind of like, no, no, things just no. kind of crossed themselves into such an opportunity at the end of the day, you were helping her, but, you know, out came this canvas for mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and what I'm going to show throughout the course, I'm going to show a couple pictures of the site. Um, and right now, um, just folks, if you can imagine, if we can all be visionaries together, just imagine a site with, you know, some overgrown weeds here and there, you know, a little bit of rubble. I like to say that, you know, when we're looking at opportunities, sometimes things don't look very beautiful up front, but when you are, you know, you're putting your mind to it, you have a vision, you have an idea, there takes work and it takes time and it takes permitting and blood, sweat and tears. Oh, we, Maybe, we don't yes. Talk <laughs> permitting so, for that. Oh my gosh. Was. Horrendous. <laughs> right, so, you know, I want to learn more about this garden and the urban agriculture. So one thing, I think the, the reason I found out about both of you was because I saw a petition online. Mm -hmm. Tell us more about that. All right, so uh, we, you know, being in the nonprofit sector, we've uh, gotten acquainted with a lot of shakers and movers around the sure. city and, mm -hmm. and, and, and various uh, and various industries. Um, and we've done some work in the political arena as well. Okay. And so we have some friends there. Right. Uh, we have some friends with the Color of Change. Okay. Uh, Color of Change is a, uh, again, I'm gonna toss the ball down. She's sure. such a detail <laughs> uh, of later here. What is, again, what is the Color of Change? It is a political organization that works to change policy right. okay. for black folks. Okay, right. right. Um, intentionally for okay. black folks. Um, and so, uh, one of our um, tribe mates is Sadie Dean. Um, she's over the Florida, I want to say South um, District. Okay. And so we worked with her. We worked with her on some political stuff when she was doing um, the Amendment Four. That, mm -hmm. right? So we did some door knocking with her, did some phone banking with her, and um, so they were in a position where they wanted to give back to specifically the community in Tampa and they wanted to do urban agriculture like that was it and so she contacted us and said hey you know what you guys are doing a community garden what else do you think that we can do mm. about this and so with our track rec record with the community garden we had to go through a lot mm. right um we put in our special one application which is a zoning Kind of deal because yeah. it was residential and commercial that lot right or being that we wanted to put a community garden on it it's a different use it's different sorry, use sorry. so we had to do a special one use so that took us from february to september mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. so it was back and forth persistence going down the land development hounding them like hey listen sure, we really want this involved not we didn't have to do oh. that luckily Okay. Right, and that was only because we ran into the right people okay. at Land and Development, and they found, you know, gave us workarounds of how we wanted to do it. And so, the first hiccup that we ran into was a parking spot. It was like the only thing that was holding up our application. So everything was going through great, and then it got to transportation. They're like, "We want you to put a parking spot on your lot," and they're like, "Are you crazy? You you, you realize we're gonna put food here, right? Food, 
fit. We don't want a running car next to the food. So we had to do an alternate design application okay. in order to bypass that. So once all of that was done, we're like, okay, good. Now we're good to go. And so um, with that experience, we were like, you know, it's necessary for every other community to be able to have a garden. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the Garden Trust for us petition came about is because we did some research and realized that most of our communities were in food desert situations mm -hmm. where they are at, at minimum half a mile to up to 20 miles okay. away from the nearest grocery store. Wow. Um, yeah. That is a lot. And then not only that, they don't have transportation a lot of them. Right. So we're talking about elders, we're talking about single parents, we're talking about children that do not right. have access to healthy foods. And if they do have a, a grocery store in the neighborhood, they don't have the competition that other communities have. Right. So after doing that research, we figured that, um, you know, it's something that we probably can do on our own, right. but it's something that we probably should hold um, people accountable for. And so we decided to go after the mayor because that is the one who controls the budget, kind of controls what's going on in the city. So just for, um, just to pause quickly, because um, with Funky Spark, we have followers that are not from this city mm -hmm. and oh. aren't from this area. So just to go back, we are in the city of Tampa, mm -hmm. and right now the mayor, mm -hmm. she is, is Mayor Jane Gaston. Okay, correct. Gotcha. And so um, the Garden Trust for us is specifically so that we can get um, funding or land mm -hmm. um, donated to those communities that are in food situa food desert situations, okay. and we're requesting um, fifteen thousand dollars a year you know, to build these community gardens so that they have access to healthy foods. And we thought that that was very important and Color of Change was really excited about it and they said, go ahead, press the button. And so we pressed the button and um, we need 300 signatures for that. And we're at 200 now. Okay. So we've been, you know, we haven't done a lot of, you know, promoting it. So the Garden Trust for Us petition is a request from um, the community, right? right? for the city of Tampa, specifically the mayor, to put on her budget $15,000 a year so that we can create community gardens around the city okay. for people that are in food desert situations. So we want to give them access to healthy foods. We want to build that kind of community feel. So mm -hmm. community garden allows them to be able sure. to do that, get together, plant some food, right. harvest together, right? Pick them out. Hit up Funky Spork for some recipes, exactly. <laughs> right? And um, you know, just kind of to give each other that kind of we're in this together. Right. We don't have to really, you know, go against each other. We can work together. So that was, you know, that's what the community garden is for. That's what ours is for. And sure. so we just wanted to be able to extend that beyond ourselves. Exactly. Right. So that's that's beautiful. Um, if you know let's let's pray you know everything kind of goes um into fruition and passes as you say you want to put community gardens throughout now we're talking about the city of tampa mm -hmm. are there any target areas you're wanting to we're targeting right now west tampa and east tampa okay that that's our um that's where the majority of the people are that are in food desert situations right. most other communities south tampa mm -hmm. um they don't have that problem right, right. they have a, a choice they have multiple right. options and the people that are in west and east tampa are kind of left behind mm -hmm. and they don't really have those options they have you know kind of small corner stores mm -hmm. those are not stores that are conducive right. to healthy foods right. it's kind of like quick quick and quick quick is not great right. and um what we really want to do is kind of teach people about why it's healthier sure. to have, you know, food right out of the ground right. instead of, you know, the box goods and the canned goods right. and all of the stuff that produces diseases later on down the line, mm -hmm. right, no, with too sure. much of that um, and try to just incorporate, you know, healthy, healthier options and exposure to healthier options because if you're not exposed to it, then most times you just won't do it, right? right. And so it's pretty much an educational thing. Um, of letting people know, like, you can use these the mm -hmm. same way that you go buy basil. You can grow some basil on your, right. on your 
Yeah, yeah, I mean, we, we grew basil on our porch and it was delicious. Oh, yeah. And so, and no it's comparison. Much, right, no, and it's so much better for you, you know, and um, it's great for kids, you yeah. know, to get involved and get in the dirt and kind of see how life yeah. progresses, right? And gardening is just, I'm not a really good gardener. My grandmother had the green thumb in the family. Um, so you're flexing that green thumb. I'm flexing it, Me right? too, I'm trying, me too. <laughs> I'm trying my best, you know, and then um, a lot of people think because they're not a gardener yeah. that they can't do it. It's like it's really easy, you know, and even if you don't have a green thumb, somebody else has a green thumb, so, you know, kind of just learn from them, or, you know, just go over there and water it. Yeah. <laughs> so I have some like intersecting thoughts because I'm Puerto Rican and Dominican, so mm -hmm. with my people, diabetes and the high blood pressure and cholesterol, those are big issues that run rampant with the Latinx community. And I would argue the same with the black, black community, community as well. Absolutely. I feel like these are some issues that you see. The food's good. It's good. Oh, it's delicious. It's delicious. It's very good. It's like that those are good. But Un un unfortunately, it, it has historically caused both of our communities health problems. I guess. Indeed. And so, um, what community, community garden can do is educate people on to how, how to supplement various food choices with more uh, uh, healthier food choices and also Absolutely. teach people how to create these. Listen, if Speaking of you, speaking of my community, your community, our grandparents were magicians in the kitchen. Yes, they were. And a lot of the times, they made a lot of things from scratch. Yeah. And so, so out of nothing. Out of yes. nothing. And and we and we've come to learn that a lot of the healthier options, um, yeah, you have to make them from scratch, but that's not too far fetched. No. We want to get everybody back in that same state of mm -hmm. mind. Because again, we want to go back to self sustainability. Sure. Right? So we want people to be able to know how to you know, raise their food straight from the earth. Sure. Know how to cultivate it, know how to process it, and, 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 uh, and, and put it into the body is where they access the most nutrients. That's beautiful. Yeah. So I guess my question to kind of segue into that, especially I'm thinking of youth, um, especially mm -hmm. younger. Of course, what I see you doing is multi generational, but Absolutely. one very powerful demographic is to start with the young people, mm -hmm. those exactly. young minds and children. So for those kids, or just even those that may be so used to living behind the screen and mm -hmm. just living off convenience and going to the convenience, or you're so used to having this kind of like instant gratification that right. things are easy and convenient because that's just how things are in the 21st century. So what kind of outreach mechanisms and tactics do you kind of foresee yourself doing in order to gauge the interests of the community to maintain these gardens and to take part and take ownership into that? Because one struggle I've seen with a lot of community gardens, not all, is you can start them, but you have to maintain them absolutely. and get community buy-in. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. One thing that we plan on doing with our garden is starting a children's education um, kind of platform there. <coughs> so we want to get them out during summer school, during spring break, during all of those times where they're already out of school and get them into programs that will teach them how to utilize that. And we've partnered with um, Urban Roots and they, uh, they go into the schools and teach them about different things. We want to have chefs come out and teach them how to cook you know, with the with those different items, right? Mm -hmm. That they grew themselves yeah. and be able to cook from. And I think that we can get them that way. I, I think children love the dirt, right? They yeah. love to. They they do still love that type of stuff. I mean, my nephew, he is inside and outside, right? We right. make sure that he's yeah. like, no, you can't just stay inside mm -hmm. in front of this tube. You need to go outside and play. Right. And so we want to reintroduce that back into the community because they do need that outside time. And if they're going to be outside, why not be outside growing some right. food and, you know, getting in touch with nature. Nature nature loves you. I mean, sure. we, can't, we can't live without it. No, we so, um, you know, trying to get them back into the habit of this is how I survive. Right, you can't survive without the food, mm -hmm. and if you don't know where your food is coming from, then you don't know what's in the food, and you don't know how that can harm you later on. So, if you are knowledgeable about what's going in there, yeah. what's coming out, then you kind of got a better you can mitigate a lot of those sure. things that happen later on. And it's better to, like you said, get them while they're young mm -hmm. so that that's something that they just continuously pass down because I mean, we didn't get that right, but our grandparents and our great grandparents oh, yeah. definitely were. 
farming. You yeah, know, they definitely right. had farms in the backyard. They mm-hmm. had cows, they had chickens, they had the and they were killing them all themselves. And they yeah. were, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. getting, all the, getting all the good stuff out of it. And so we just want to bring that back around sure. because, you know, we don't want to get into a situation where you can't access food at all. Sure. Right? Because if that happens, then that's the decline. Right. And so if you can get yourself into the habit of even just growing your own vegetables, right? Right. Maybe you gotta go to the butcher to get your meat, but if you can grow your own vegetables. Let's start there. Let's start there, right? And I think I think that it will work. And I think that we have um, a good community um, outreach so far that mm-hmm. people are interested in and they're willing to bring their children in and, and kind of learn and, and get them back into the habit of that. That's beautiful, that's beautiful. So like, you know, I'm thinking like, and we've kind of touched on this throughout the interview, but you, I know you two are visionaries, so like, let's think big picture. Mm-hmm. If we had a magic, you know, policy wand and, you know, the funds were just flowing, <laughs> you know, and looking at the city of Tampa, um, if you, what is the ultimate vision for, because what I have here is, um, you're calling it the, what's the name of the garden? It's Unity Garden. Yeah, yeah. so let's go back so if you had a magic policy wand and you could just you know by the stroke of a you know wand and snap of a finger just you know have this big vision for the city of Tampa um, we're thinking not just community gardening but um, just kind of this intersection of public health and mm-hmm. urban agriculture what would you like to see oh um, wow so no pressure or anything no, 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 right? no, no. <laughs> yeah so we, we're somewhat somewhat uh, you know taking steps for seeing that bigger vision already and, and it does start with this um, this community garden uh, petition what we would like to see is various community gardens around the city okay right of various sizes and with different uh, functionalities to them of course okay. I mean because course when we're thinking about agriculture that is such a vast industry yes right and um, we have somewhat of a disconnect to our rural uh, suppliers in a sense mm-hmm. and we can reconnect to them in, in, in this aspect right so um, we, we want to see uh, what we call stationary lots uh, or satellite lots all around Tampa um, we, we want to put some, some but let's, lack, for lack of a better word, some high functioning agricultural systems on. Sure. When we're talking about hydroponics, okay. aquaponics, uh, and, and, and in this aspect, we can also train people and teach people how to build these structures mm-hmm. themselves. So we can put them in their own backyard. Yeah. You know what I mean? So again, the community gardens are, they will serve as a, as a place of education and, a, and also as a place of resource. But, but primarily, again, it is, is to teach self-sustainability. So we want people to be able to take this information and utilize it in their everyday life, yeah. whether they come visit a community garden or not. Right. We, we know that even that model in, in, a, in a business world seems like suicide, because in other words, it's like you're giving away the cow. Mm-hmm. But so we're talking about food here, that is an everyday need. Yes. That, that, that never stops being a right. need. Um, also, we want to add some mobility to the um, to the urban agricultural thing mm. too. We would like to see uh, mobile units, in other words, food trucks or anything that can um, carry food on the go, stopping at the uh, the bus stops for the children, mm. pulling up at elderly homes, pulling up in places where people need these need access to these um, these healthier options. I mean, um, just just to throw a thought out there, we kind of want to do a bus route of. Uh, of uh, uh, food trucks just okay. circulating throughout the city, stopping okay. where, stopping where they need to be, and uh, you know this 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 is this is good commerce as well. So yeah. this is uh, that's the overall vision of it is just to you know convert Tampa into a uh, agriculturally self sustainable city. We've got good soil here, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and good climate. Yes, and, 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 and a diversity of cultures. Who and that would bring a lot of. Uh, uh, different cultures together yeah. you know what I mean right. yeah <coughs> and as far as policy goes I think that um we should also be thinking about um renewable energy mm-hmm. and how um how we're building yeah what we're building and how that affects the environment mm-hmm. right um we gotta get gotta be right. cognizant of that because if 
what you're building is not conducive to what you have in the community, then that's a clash. Yeah. You know, we want to get everything on the same page. So we want to influence policy that will kind of make it illegal for you to do things that is not conducive to sure. the environment. Because, I mean, I know they plan on going to Mars, but I don't think they're going to get it, <laughs> get there, right? right? And so let's, we got we, we to gotta stay here on Earth. Yeah. Yeah. We all got to be here. And um, we don't want to destroy the planet in which we need. Right. Um, and so we need to get into the habit of, you know, asking these questions and really kind of, and I know people don't want to, but you gotta kind of push back yeah. and say, is this really gonna be good for us 50 years from now? Right. Exactly. Because we're looking at situations where we've got the global warming going on, we've got the different climate changes that are mm -hmm. happening, we've got all of these, the plant life, the animal life, yeah. all of these things are being affected by everything that yes. we're building. So if the planets go, the animals are gone, yeah. and the plants are gone, we're following, we're following. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. We're following. Yeah. So we really gotta, you know, get into the habit of thinking about that type of stuff. And sure, sure. Uh, I know that that's like, that's the, that's the ugly side of it's, what I people mean, don't want to really true. Really look at. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I read an article the other day and we had killed off literally like 75% of the animal life in the water. <sighs> and um, we're talking about bees. Yeah. Bees are essential to our life right. skin and they're like disappearing mm -hmm. and that's no good, no. you know? And so we've got to really think about um, the consequences of our actions. And even though we want to progress forward, we also have to think about where are we progressing forward at? Right, absolutely. Right? We've got to, if we got to progress forward on Earth, yeah. we got to take care of Earth, right? Because without it, we're, we're not here. Right. You know, we need the trees. <laughs> we need the flowers. Uh -huh. we, need, we need the ants. We need, <laughs> we need everything. the beetles. <laughs> we need all of that yes, stuff, you know? Yes, and um, that kingdom out there, the nature kingdom, it's been running itself for a very long time. Yes. For us to come in and kind of influence it and say this is how we want it to be when it's been kind of, it's, always taking care of us, I think that's kind of a little selfish right. on our part, Indeed. you know, we got to do a little bit better with that. Yeah. Um, on, a, on a micro level, uh, one way we can get involved in this, uh, you know, just, just on a local level, because for the most part, it is big city development that affects nature the most. Because, I mean, because, listen, when we go out to the country, the bugs are still out there. Mm -hmm. They're thriving. They're fine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just the, um, the inner city pockets that are... Um, Infecting environmental sustainability. So when it, when it comes to policy, again, the, this whole urban agricultural movement is is right in the heart of the city, and this is where we're affecting uh, environmental policy. Where we should be affecting environmental policy the most. Um, policy is not difficult to change. Mm -hmm. It just and I, I'm just not figuring this out. Mm -hmm. It just takes numbers. Yeah. That's it. So. If we can get, if we can push the uh, the campaign for it, um, I think there's a lot of people. Just just like we've gotten a lot of support, there's a lot of people who will support policy change if they know policy can be changed and they can do something about it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's just simply what it is. A lot of I mean, it's then it's like that with anything. If you, if you don't know, you don't know. But if you do, a lot of people are willing to do better once they know. Yeah. A lot of people are willing to do better once they know, and this is. Uh, across cultures, I mean, I, 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 everybody, you know, I've met people from all walks of life right. who are interested in, in this entire industry. Right. So uh, the support is there um, as, I, I don't want to necessarily say we're leaders in the movement, but we are advocates. Sure. And uh, we're, we're definitely willing to get out there and, and, and push it. And anybody who's, um, who's willing to get involved, just reach out to us if, if there's anything that you want to and we'll let them learn. So that, you know, segues to my last couple questions. Um, you know, for these, for folks, especially if you're local, <laughs> and maybe you're not local, but um, so two parts. So first of all, where can people find out more information about your movement? Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> she, she, she knows, um, I, I'll forget something. She knows so that. we, um, our, our website is www.urbanprogressalliance.com. Dot org. I'll link um, that below. <laughs> if you go to the Tampa Heritage Initiative um, tab, there is the tab for the Unity Garden. There's also the tab for the Garden Trust yes. so that you can sign the petition. Um, you can sign up to be a volunteer. You can sign up to do donate there okay. as well. Um, 
We have a Facebook page. You can reach us on our personal pages. Yes. I'm Anna Jones. He's okay. Andre Hill Jr. Yes. Um, we're pretty open. You know, we, we don't we don't shy away. I work for the people. So, um, so what I'm gonna do, folks? So it sounds like so maybe there are some folks that are local and they want to get their hands dirty. Mm -hmm. They want to sign the petition. It's possible, mm -hmm. and through that website, I'm gonna put that information below. So folks, if you are looking for a way to get involved in something beautiful and something local going on here in Tampa, especially in dealing with food justice, local food, and just overall positive change in community transformation, I'm gonna link all the information about the Garden, the Urban Progress Alliance, and these two folks. So anyway, I wanna thank so you both so much for taking your time just to chat with me. Oh, thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you, you. Well. thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. You take care, everybody.